Hi, I'm going to show you how to connect to a database using a Windows form which we will create in Visual Studio. And we are in lesson 6 of the MTA software course on page 153. And just to explain what I'm doing, there's our database which is actually a file, Northwind file. And this is the Windows form that we're going to create. So first of all, I'll start up Visual Studio. I have 2001 installed. Then go File, New Project, Windows Form. I can give it a name. Super DB. Doesn't matter what you call it. Okay. So when it starts up first we will see the form in the graphical display and we can also look at the code for that. So that code there is describing that form. So now, instead, we could, we could also do this programmatically, but we're going to use the existing toolbox items, such as, we're going to use a button, and size it, can give us a name. Execute. Execute. I'm going to resize this form as well. And I need a, a text field. I should say text box. There it is. And again, I'll just resize that. And we need something in to display the data from the database. So I will use a data grid view. And again, I'm going to resize it. Okay, that's good. Okay, so um, I want to. Uh, create some code so that when the user presses the button I can get that to call some other uh, code item or method. So all I do is I double click on the button and it actually produces the handler method that deals with events so when you click on it this method will be called. So it did that automatically for us which is quite nice because now I can add in a bit of code into it. And I'm going to do, I'm going to say, if a user has text in the text box, which will be, it won't be text, it'll be some SQL command, SQL in the text box, Execute the following method. So if that's textbooks text box one, I'll just show you that again. That's that text box one. And you can even see there's its name. Text box one. If text box one dot text length, so if there's any text in there greater than zero, call this method. And we'll call the method select data, which is what I'm about to write as well. I'm going to pass in the text that the user would have written in the box. One dot Okay, so now I'm going to write that method. It's a private method, because the only thing calling it will be another private method. Select data. And it takes in a type, string, and call it select. Select command text. Now, because uh, the user could put in all kinds of 
data, I'm going to use a try catch block, and that means that it will catch any errors that the user might type in. So I'll just do a quick. It's always good before when you're writing try catch to write both of them first before you write your code inside the try, just to make sure your brackets are right. message box so it'll pop up to the user to say you're entering in. What you're entering in is causing an error. Okay. So now I'm going to write the key bit of code in here in the try block. And first of all I'm going to connect to the database and instead of writing all that out and boring you I've actually written it already. And um, this here, Online Lecture 7 Connect to Database, you have that available, these slides, so you can do the same thing. So I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to explain it. So, the first thing I do is I connect to the database. It outlines the type of database it is and whereabouts it's located. So in here it says it's in C TAS software and that's where I stored it. So you may store it in a different place, but just to show you where I have stored it, under C drive, tasks, software, and there's my Northwind database that you could, too can download. And it's of a type MDF. So how I get that path quickly is I literally just click on the text box and it comes up in blue and I use Control C, which will copy that. And then I literally put it in here, Control B. And then we have a bit more information here Again, that's almost default, which is for timer and things like that. So that there is the connection string, and it says here SQL adapter. This is the object that we're going to use to connect to the database. And you can see it's got squiggy lines under here because I haven't imported the classes that support that object. So if I just right click and I go resolve, and I will say import system data SQL client class, pre-written class. And now it works. Okay. So now you know that this is going to build. So I just go build solution. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so once we've done the connection to the database, I'm actually going to create a new database data table and I'm going to fill it with information. So I'm going to pass that data table. So the string, first of all, the select command text is passed to the database and the results are passed back in to this table because we use the data adapter, which is that. And we use dot fill with the table. So we're filling the information from the SQL command. The results are returned back to the table and now we're going to display the table using the data grid view. If we just go back in here, if I click on that, you can see that's the data grid view item there. So I'm posting my results back in to the data grid view. And data grid view dot data source equals the return from the database, the return information. <coughs> Okay, so let's have a go at running this. So we just run start. Okay, so now we have it up and we can type in what we like here. So one of the key tables in the database is called customers. So I will do a general select star from customers. And then I'll hit execute SQL. 
and then the return information is all the customers stored in that database and stored in here. So say if I just put in some see if it now crashes or will the try catch block catch it could not find. So that was pretty nice. So it gave us a pop-up to tell us it could not find the stored procedure. Okay, that's it. Thank you.